Filmmaking is nothing if not a stressful business. Even the smallest, most modest movie is a result of dozens or even hundreds of people combining their skills to deliver a releasable end product. The expensive, time-poor nature of filmmaking means that tensions frequently run high on movie sets, yet once the shoot has started, it's extremely rare for directors to take their ball and go home. For one, a director's exit typically signals a major breakdown in communication at some point, or that they've lost any and all confidence they had in the film going in. But in each case, these filmmakers did the rarest thing of exiting their movie right in the middle of shooting. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 10 directors who quit movies during filming. Number 10, David O. Russell, Accidental Love. David O. Russell's follow-up to I Heart Huckabees was originally supposed to be Nailed, a political comedy co-starring Jessica Biel and Jake Gyllenhaal. Though the film began shooting in 2008, it was reportedly shut down 14 times during principal photography due to non-payment of cast and crew prompting Biel and Gyllenhaal to stage a walkout. The film sat in production limbo until 2010 amid various financial woes, at which point Russell was summoned to complete reshoots for the film. But the director refused to return to shoot new material claiming that original financer David Bergstein sabotaged the production for his own gain while also objecting to Bergstein asking other producers to take 50% pay cuts. As such, Russell quit the film and the reshoots were eventually conducted without him. Due to Beale and co-star Tracy Morgan's contractual requirements, however, they were forced to take part in the reshoots, unlike Gyllenhaal. Nailed was eventually renamed to the more mainstream-friendly title of Accidental Love and released in 2015, where it unsurprisingly received predominantly negative negative reviews. Number 9. Zack Snyder Justice League. The production of 2017's original Justice League film was, to be kind, an unmitigated nightmare. Though original director Zack Snyder actually completed the initial seven-month shoot, the film languished in post-production as Warner Brothers mandated extensive reshoots to craft a more crowd-pleasing two-hour revision of Snyder's more epic take on the material. But Snyder then made the shock announcement that he wouldn't be returning to shoot the new material due to a personal tragedy, which turned out to be the sudden death of his daughter, Autumn. Warner Bros. swiftly turned to Joss Whedon, who had already been brought aboard to help write material for the reshoots, to also film the new scenes and oversee post-production, creating an entirely new edit of the film. In the years that followed, Snyder downplayed his involvement with Whedon's version of the film, while co-writer Chris Terrio later admitted he tried to have his name removed from it entirely. In an unprecedented move, though, Snyder's vision was eventually restored, with Warner Brothers paying $70 million for him to complete post-production on his original four-hour Justice League movie, including shooting and additional epilogue sequence. Zack Snyder's Justice League went on to receive considerably more positive reviews than Justice League, with most critics deeming it a vindication of the filmmaker's original vision. Number 8. Walter Hill – Supernova 2000 sci-fi horror film Supernova is alleged to have ended up costing $90 million in total, largely due to differences in vision between the studio and director Walter Hill. Hill, a veteran filmmaker with esteemed credits such as The Warriors in 48 Hours, was given just weeks to prepare the shoot due to MGM wanting to avoid the film getting entangled in the impending Screen Actors Guild strike, leaving him little time to iron out scripting issues. The last straw for Hill was when MGM wanted to test screen the film without completed visual effects or the remaining scenes filmed, which he felt would be disastrous. With MGM refusing to pony up an extra $1.5 million to shoot more scenes before the test screening, Hill walked away from the production. The film then hired Jack Shoulder, who you may know from A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge, to replace him for reshoots and re-editing. In an ironic turnaround though, new MGM executives came in and weren't happy with Shoulder's cut, so went back to Hill. Hill suggested $5 million worth of reshoots, which were refused, and Hill once again departed the project, while the directing was credited instead to Thomas Lee. Supernova was then shelved for a while until MGM brought in Francis Ford Coppola to re-edit the film at the cost of $1 million. With test screenings still going poorly, MGM sold the international rights to United Artists, and it was finally released in January 2000, two years later than originally planned. It went on to flop with critics and general audiences, while many who worked on the film maintained that much of Hill's work didn't act actually appear in the final product. Number 7. Robert Mandel, The Rage, Carry 2 
Surprisingly enough, it took Hollywood more than 20 years to trot out a sequel to Brian De Palma's legendary Carrie, with The Rage Carrie 2 being finally released in 1999. Production stalled for two years before shooting began in 1998 under director Robert Mandel of School Ties fame. Yet just two weeks into filming, Mandel quit the film citing creative differences. Though Mandel hasn't ever elaborated on precisely what these differences were, the production rushed to replace him with Cat She from Poison Ivy fame drafted in and given less than a week to prepare for the shoot. The state of the film also required Xi to reshoot two weeks worth of material filmed by Mandel, what little good it did given that The Rage Carry 2 was largely panned by critics and flopped at the box office. Emily Burgell's performance as Carrie's half-sister protagonist Rachel was, however, praised by even many of the critics who otherwise lambasted the film. Number 6. John Lasseter, Toy Story 4 Toy Story 4 was officially announced in November 2014, with then-head of Pixar John Lasseter, who previously helmed the first two films, set to return to direct. While animated movies aren't filmed in the traditional way that a live-action movie is, Lasseter nevertheless announced in July 2017, midway through the movie's production, that he was stepping back and giving sole directorial duties to first-time filmmaker Josh Cooley. Lasseter claimed that he was quitting as director due to his combined duties at Pixar, Walt Disney Animation Studios and Disney Tune Studios, though given that numerous sexual misconduct allegations were levelled against him mere months later, many have suspected that he may have known the accusations were coming and made an early exit in an attempt to save face. The very month that the allegations against Lasseter were made public and he started a six-month absence from Pixar, Toy Story 4's original writers Rashida Jones and Will McCormack also withdraw from the film, citing philosophical differences, with most of their material being rewritten. Despite major personnel changes, Toy Story 4 was a major critical and commercial success, with Cawley winning the Oscar for Best Animated Feature in 2020. Number 5. Victor Fleming, Gone with the Wind The production of Gone with the Wind is quite literally the stuff of legend, enough that three separate directors shot extensive portions of the film. First up was George Cukor, who spent 18 days shooting the film before being fired by producer David O. Selznick. Selznick apparently disagreed with Cukor's shooting style, but Cukor was also said to have clashed with star Clark Gable. In an attempt to right the ship, Victor Fleming, who was already shooting The Wizard of Oz at the time, was reassigned to pick up from Cukor on Gone with the Wind. Yet Fleming himself ended up leaving the shoot abruptly after suffering with exhaustion, at which point For Whom the Bell Tolls director Sam Wood was drafted in to shoot 24 days worth of photography. In Fleming's case, however, he did return to set after recuperating and shot for 93 days in total, accounting for roughly two-thirds of the entire shoot. As a result, he received the sole directing credit for the film, which impressively bears few immediately noticeable scars of its Hell for Leather production, and was of course one of Hollywood's greatest success stories. Number 4. Kevin Yeager, Hellraiser Bloodline Hellraiser Bloodline was the fourth entry into the horror franchise and tellingly the last to end up getting a theatrical release. After reanimator director Stuart Gordon quit the project during pre-production, special effects technician Kevin Yeager was hired to make his directorial debut with the film, having a reputation for producing quality work within tight budgetary constraints. The shoot was nevertheless fraught with problems, as numerous key crew members were either fired or replaced during filming, and though Jaeger came in under budget and on time as promised, Miramax wasn't happy with his work. Jaeger wasn't thrilled at the prospect of something he worked hard on becoming another movie entirely, fears which were fully realised when he viewed the final cut of the movie. This version, which saw new director Joe Chappelle shoot new scenes and significantly trim down Jaeger's original material, strayed enough from Jaeger's vision that he opted to take the infamous Alan and Smithy credit instead. Though Bloodline was a mild commercial success, it was panned by critics and signalled the series' decline into lower budget direct to video fare. Number 3 Carol Reed, Mutiny on the Bounty. 1962's Mutiny on the Bounty went into production with the legendary Carol Reed directing, but three months into the shoot, Reed left the set and flew home due to what the studio described as an undisclosed ailment. In actuality, Reed was fed up with the difficult star Marlon Brando, as well as meddling from both the film's producers and studio MGM, and walked away from filming. Oscar-winning director Lewis Milestone was then brought in to replace him, who claimed that Reed had only been able to shoot a single seven-minute scene to completion during his time on the film. Milestone didn't fare much better, suffering through a tyrannical Brando, inclement weather on the Tahitian set, and script issues, all of which collectively bloated the budget out by an additional $10 million. Number 2. Justin Lin, Fast X 
The most recent entry into our list is perhaps the most shocking of all. Just six days after the 10th Fast and Furious film began shooting, writer-director Justin Lin announced that he was leaving the project due to the ever-nebulous creative differences. Lin, who previously helmed five entries into the franchise, including Fast X's direct predecessor, F9, has been largely credited with the series' blockbuster success, and so fans immediately began to speculate what could possibly push him to quit his sixth movie a few days into shooting. Rumours soon ran rampant that it was due to a dispute between Lin and star producer Vin Diesel, sparked by an Instagram video Diesel posted mere days before Lin's departure, where Lin appeared visibly uncomfortable. This was later confirmed to be the case by The Hollywood Reporter, who cited Lin's frustration with continually changing aspects of Fast X's production, and especially Diesel's repeated requests for script changes. With Universal said to be burning up $1 million a day, leaving the cast and crew on standby, they soon enough announced that Lin was being replaced by Louis Leterrier of The Transporter, The Incredible Hulk, and Now You See Me. Number 1. Jonathan Lawrence, Empires of the Deep if you haven't heard of Empires of the Deep, don't feel bad, because the 3D fantasy film has never actually been released, despite starting shooting in 2009 with a stonking $130 million budget. The film was the brainchild of Chinese billionaire realtor Zhan Jiang, who desperately wanted to produce his own Spielberg-esque mega blockbuster. After several higher-profile directors quit the project, including The Empire Strikes Back's Irving Kirshner, Zhang settled for commercial and musical video director Jonathan Lawrence. Lawrence, who had no major feature film credits to his name, has since detailed the extremely difficult shoot, defined by culture clashes between the Chinese crew and international cast, producer Zhang's intrusive amount of control over the project, and the misery of shooting on location in unpredictable weather conditions. Lawrence toughed it out for five whole months before walking away from the production, at which point Michael French was drafted in to film the remaining two-thirds of the script. French lasted two months before departing for an existing project, where he was replaced by Scott Miller, who successfully completed filming in late 2010. Reshoots were conducted in 2014, and though trailers have since been released, crowdfunding efforts to complete vital visual effects work haven't been successful. What a mess. And that's our list. Let us know what you thought in the comments below, as well as letting us know other directors that took their ball and went home. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com, and have a good week.